Hello, hello. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Birdie here with Redbird Designs. Going live today to do our five days of Christmas card paintings. This is day three, and we are going to do the truck today. So if you're just watching for the first time, we are doing a virtual paint party. It's a free event. We go live every day at noon this week to do a different painting. And um, these little Christmas cards are super easy and super fun to paint. And I feel it would be just a huge blessing for somebody to get a hand-painted Christmas card this year. So let me show you the series we're doing. Monday we did the snowman. And if you're able... Oh, I think I muted again. Thank you. Let's see. Hello, hello, hello. One of these days I'm going to get this right. Okay, can you hear me now? Oh, you can hear me now. Okay, wait a minute. Let's go back. Okay. It's too many settings for these lives anymore. Okay, I think we're okay. All right, so let me just start over and make sure that everyone heard. If you're able to watch, say hi. Good afternoon, Erin, and I don't see anybody else on. Oh, Bonnie, good morning. Afternoon, Bonnie. Okay, so Bertie Larson here with Redbird Designs, and we are doing our five days of Christmas card paintings where we're going live every day this week and doing a new painting for Christmas cards. These paintings are super fun and super cute and easy and I feel would be a huge blessing to give a hand-painted uh, card to somebody this year. So, um, we were live on Monday and we did the snowman, so make sure to scroll down on our Facebook page and find that. And then yesterday we did the O Christmas tree. And then today we are doing the truck. Um, and then we have Joy and uh, the Gnome to wrap it up this week. So every day at noon we will go live and step you through painting your own Christmas card. So let's talk about supplies. Um... I am painting on just a cardstock. Um, this was full size cardstock. I think it was 11 by 9 or something like that. Um, and I cut it down to be 4.5 by 6. And so that's the size I'm using. Nothing fancy, just some heavyweight paper. And then I've got the blank note, note cards. And I'm just using a craft brown color. You can use any color you want. And you could actually just paint right on this if you wanted to. Um, I like the look of having this doubled or this layered look on the card. And so that's why I went with that. Let's show you what I got here. So for the note card, I picked mine up at Michael's, but I know you can get these at Hobby Lobby. You can get them off Amazon. And they're just a. Um, blank card and envelope kit and they are five by six and a half okay so that is really all you need um if you would like a supply list or tracer please message me and i'd be happy to send those to you 
if you'd like to paint along with us and have a list of supplies and whatnot. Okay, so today we're doing this uh, vintage red truck with the tree coming out and uh, let's talk about uh, brushes. I'm going to use a flat and a couple rounds, a medium round and a liner and my small round if I can find it. I should organize my, organize my brushes by size, but who has time for that, right? Plus, all my kids come and use them in my craft room, and so they never get put back, and I never put them back. There it is. So I got a small, a medium, and a liner brush, and a flat. That's really all we're going to need today. And then for paint, a white. I've got a light blue or cotton blue for the sky. I'm just using a regular bright red for the truck and we'll mix it with some of the black to give it that darker red color. Obviously black and a Christmas green. And then just a little bit of some yellow for the light here. But not necessary if you didn't want to throw yellow in there. You could always just do a white light there. Okay. That's all we need. Small amount of paint. Okay, so also, um, if you didn't notice, I have this nice white border around the edge. And to achieve that kind of matted, finished look, I'm using tape. Let me show you the gnome that does not have that. Here I took the paint all the way to the edge. And so um, you could do it either way. If you want to have that edging, you can. If not, um, just paint everything to the edge. But to achieve that, I'm going to grab some masking tape. You want to make sure that you're using some sort of painter's masking tape for this, not uh, a scotch tape because that will tear your paper. I'll just get this lined up here so it's level with you guys. And I'm just going to eyeball how much of an edging I want. down just a little bit to seal those edges so our paint doesn't seep underneath. Okay, And then I'm going to take my tracer and line it up where I want it to be and tape it at the top so it doesn't move on me. And then I'm going to take some graphite paper and there's my pencil. Graphite paper has two sides. It's got a dull side and a shiny side. And so make sure that your shiny side is down. Then we're going to slide it between our two here. And then just with a light pressure, we're going to trace our truck. So if you're painting along, comment painting. Even if you're not doing it as I'm doing it live, maybe you're doing the painting another time, but I'd love to hear if you are creating your own Christmas cards. Okay. And so I'm not going to uh, put the tree in. I, I don't know if you noticed that, but... Um, after painting everything, I'd lose the lines from the tree anyways, so we're going to hand um, sketch those in, hand paint those in. And it's really simple, just a couple lines there, so don't stress about that. Okay, let's get started. We are ready. So I've just got my palette here that I reuse over and over again. And all my colors that I've used so far this week. Let's get this straightened out here. There we go. All right, so we're going to start with that background, and we're going to use our light cotton blue, just a light blue, and some white. And 
I'm going to create that nice muted background um, that we did with the snowman. So I'm going to use both the white and the blue in my brush and I'm going to just randomly place brush strokes out and create just kind of an abstract blue background. So I load my brush up with a bunch of white and I'm just going to dip it then in the blue so there's no mixed color on there. You can definitely see the blue and the white. And then when I put my background in, my sky, I want my brush strokes to be very random and haphazard and fast. This is a fast, easy background. And we also do not want to overblend. because we want to see that variation that happens when we randomly place our brush strokes on and we have both those colors on our brush. Yes, some of it is going to blend and create the lighter blue, um, but we still have some pockets of white that look like some abstract cloud there and we have some darker blue areas and it just makes a really nice background. I want to get under the tailgate here and I'm just kind of doing mostly blue because it would be darker down under the tailgate where it's going to have a little bit of some shadow also. also. And don't worry if your brush strokes go um, outside of the lines because that's a great thing about painting. We're just going to add another layer and cover that up anyways. Okay. All right, so let's fill in this window here. I'm just going to grab some white and it's pretty much the same color as the background, but a little bit lighter. So more white, less blue. And I use the brush strokes that are back and forth um, as opposed to crisscross uh, random brush strokes just to create that illusion of a glass that has kind of that smooth surface there. Okay, on to the truck. So we're going to grab our red. And you could use any color red. Actually, I'm going to use my primary red as opposed to that bright red. I don't know if you can see how bright that is. And I could dull that down, um, but I had been using this primary red, which is just a little bit darker. You can kind of see the difference there. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my medium brush now. And let's see, let's grab some black out because we're gonna wanna mix a little bit of that. And we're going to start by laying out our first coat of red. We're going to need two coats because red is a, a bit transparent. And so um, putting on just a light coat is going to show some of that card stock through. So at this point, it's going to be a pretty bright looking truck. And we'll come back in with some of uh, a mix of black and red and darken it up and put a second coat in. So if you're not painting along with us, which is fine, who sends out Christmas cards still? Who still holds on to that tradition? Because I know a lot of people have transferred to sh sending out emails or uh, a lot of us just, you know, do our Facebook posts or our social media posts with a Merry Christmas and a picture.
Hi, Sandra. How are you? You're watching, but we'll paint later. Yeah, sometimes watching the process first and then painting it later helps. Okay, so we got our first coat on. You can see it's this really bright, not very pretty red right now, um, but that's our first coat. And so we're going to let that dry and we're going to move down into the uh, bumper here. And I am going to just mix my own gray for that. So I've got white here and then I'm just going to dip my brush into that black just a tiniest bit. Black is very strong and overpowers really quickly so be aware of that. You only need the tiniest bit. Okay, and then once you've got the gray that you like, then we'll take that and we're going to fill that bumper in. So I am one in the camp of just sending a mass email out or popping on social media and saying Merry Christmas that way. But this year I have hand painted cards to send. So we will do that. Okay, I had a little bit of red in my brush so I'm going to wash it real quick here. And before I move on to the tire, I'm going to uh, grab a little bit of white and add some white streaks to my bumper just to indicate uh, maybe some shine from the sun. So just a few bits of white around the edging there. Okay, and then I'm going to go into that black and we'll get that tire painted here. So, um, my truck is pretty much dry, so we can come back in with our second coat of that. And at this point, I want to darken up my red just a little bit. So I'm going to grab some of my red, push it off to the side. I'm going to dip my brush into that black. Again, just a small amount makes a big difference. Start very tiny and work your way up. If you need more black, grab it, but it's hard to uh, come back from a really dark color. And I might have already overdid it right there. Doesn't take much. Actually, I think that's going to be okay. Okay, so I've got my dark red, and now I'm going to come in and just streak that dark red around the edges. I don't want to paint the entire truck this dark red. I'm just kind of touching up on the edges of where it might look a little more dirty or there might be some rust there. So, uh, you know, at the top of the tailgate here, coming around where it closes and opens, and then on the, um, the wheel wheel, top of that and around the side there. Get down to the bottom. And then Typically the back of a truck has that indentation where the name of the truck would be, or the brand. So I'll put a little bit of dark there. Okay, and then I'm going to just go grab some of that uh, pure red that I have and fill in everywhere else and kind of blend those colors in.
So you can start to see those dark areas and those light areas. So I'm going to wash my brush and I'm going to grab some of the white and we're going to add some highlights to our truck. Just using my medium round, you could switch, actually let's switch to my liner so I don't get too heavy of a line. When you're creating outlines or highlights and you want it to be really thin, Grab your liner, but also remember to use a very light pressure because even with a liner and a heavy hand, you can create a fairly dark, thick line. So I'm just going to grab and add a highlight up there where the sun's hitting the top there. And then on the top of the tailgate here. Come around there and then along the wheel well here we'll add a highlight and then in this indent area okay so we're going to wash our brush and now we're going to switch to the black with our outline um, with our liner brush and let's add some fun defining outlines, some fun um, streaks here. We don't want to outline the entire truck, but we also want to try and define some of these lines. So at the top here where we have our tailgate we want to line, here where um, the tailgate separates from the wheel well. And you could also add some fun little dots every once in a while. Just to kind of give it more of a whimsical feel. I'm going to add um, some outline around my window. And most of the window is going to be covered up. And then I'll add a couple lines here in the tailgate around that indentation. And then I'm going to outline my bumper, add a couple dots there. If outlining like this makes you nervous or um, you'd rather use a paint pen, you definitely could use one of those. The one thing I do want to caution on that is you want to make sure that everything is completely dry. So I don't know if you could even use your Sharpie that I talked about yesterday. Um, that would work. Let's see if I can find my smallest paint pen here. Uh, you can buy all sorts of different types of paint pens online or at the um, any of the bigger craft stores, Michael's, Hobby, uh, Hobby Lobby. This is a Michael's brand, Craft Smart. Um, but you also want to make sure when you're buying those that you get the right tip for the job. So this is a pretty heavy tip. I wouldn't want to use it on this small of a painting. Um, but you can get smaller ones like this with an extra fine point. And those really make it super simple to outline things like this. And um, like I said, just make sure that everything is really, really dry before you start using those paint pens. Okay, so we also have a couple lights here that we want to outline. Okay. And then let's fill those lights in and then we can start working on the tree. So I'm going to grab this uh, red here and just come in with that red inside this longer one and make it a little bit brighter 
maybe add a little bit of white to it. Okay, and then I'm gonna use just a dab of yellow for that top one. bit of white inside there as well to add a little bit of glint inside there. Let me show you that on my original hair. So I added the yellow and then there's just a little uh, upside down smiley face or smiley smile excuse me kind of brush stroke inside there to give it that rounded look but also that there's like a glint of some light coming off there. All right, we are ready to move on to the tree. So our first step is to determine the shape of our tree. In this case, my branches or my trunk started about midway or about an inch away from the edge here and I just did a nice swooping arc here. So it's kind of leaning over in the truck you could have it go straight if you wanted to, however you want your tree to sit in the truck. So we're just going to use black and I'm just going to use my liner brush for this step because we really don't see too much of that trunk. Um, so let's determine where we want to start and then use a light pressured hand and create a sweeping motion to the point where we want to stop our tree, the tip of the tree there. I'm just going to darken that, or thicken that trunk up towards the end here, because we will see a little bit of it. Sandra says, I like to use paint pens for outlining. Yeah, they do help. Um, it helps because we're so used to just using a pen or a pencil in that manner and we have a little bit more control as opposed to the brush. When I'm doing lettering on certain things, I definitely tend to use the paint pens more. Okay, so we've got our trunk here and now we're ready to do the tree. So I'm going to grab some of my... Christmas green here and just like yesterday with the tree I want to create dimension in that tree and so I'm going to create three different shades of green I'm going to start by adding um, a darker green in the branches and then we're going to move to just the Christmas green and then we'll add some lighter color so I'm going to grab some of this green push it off to the side dip my brush into the black and create a dark green. Okay, there is my dark green. And so this tree is a little bit different. Let's just show you, I've got this tree and then yesterday we did a Christmas tree, which we used a flat brush to create the branches on the tree. So today we're going to use a round brush. I've got my medium round, and this is going to be just fun little flicks of the wrist to create those branches. So I'm gonna start at the top and just do light little flicks of the wrist, small short little branches and then as we get further down we're going to build on that and create more. And at the top here they're a little bit straight. I keep them straight and then as I go and they get a little bit bigger I give them just a little bit of an arc. So the tree's kind of coming up around itself like that, so I want those branches to um, have an arc in them. Okay, and I need some more green. Okay, 
So your tree is not going to look the best. Don't give up on it. Paintings always look horrible before they look beautiful. So don't give up. Keep going. It's all about layers and more layers. So this first layer, you might think, oh my gosh, this tree looks horrible. I'm going to toss it. I'm going to start over. I'm actually going to change my brush. That one was a little bit too haywire for me. It was going everywhere. Okay, so just quick little flicks of the wrist. Also, don't be afraid to turn your paper or your canvas or whatever it is that you're painting um, to accommodate your brush strokes. So that you're not holding your hand awkwardly, you're able to get those brush strokes in with ease. So now that we've got our dark down, I'm going to dip my brush just directly in the green that was straight from the bottle, so the Christmas green, and I'm going to add some more brush strokes and just continually to thicken up my tree. So we're adding another color, another um, tint to the green, I guess. So you can see how it's starting to build. So we want to start some brush strokes here and come out. But we also want to create just a, a arched brush stroke right over the trunk because we don't want to see the trunk. And if we start at the trunk and move away, we're going to start to see that and it's going to be it's going to look like our tree doesn't have branches coming towards us. So to create the look of a full tree, you want to have some brush strokes that cover that trunk. So we're going to start midway of the thickness of the tree and create an art brush stroke here to kind of cover that up and create those branches that are sticking out. Okay. All right, so let's grab a little bit of white and make a light green. Don't want it to be too light, but we do want to have those three values to give us the um, dimension in our tree. So we've got a light green. Yeah, can you see that? Yep. So I've got a little bit of a lighter green, and I'm just going to add a couple of brush strokes here and there with that. There we go, there's our Christmas tree. We got just a few more steps on this card and we are good. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to grab some white and I wanna create a box down here because I don't know if you saw, but we have a little um, license plate spot down here. I'm gonna create a white box and then I'm gonna grab my liner brush and outline it and put 25 in the license plate. You could do ho, 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 or whatever you want there. But we're really only seeing one half of that license plate, so kind of keep that in mind too. So I took my liner brush with a really light pressure, I outlined the license plate, and then I'm just going to just put a two and a five in here with a little dash right there, like it's catching the end of that license plate. 
Okay. So then the last step for our truck here is to create the snow. And um, you definitely don't need it to be snowing. That's something um, actually on all of these paintings you could add, you know, the, the, the snowfall would look great on all of them or you could leave them off. So for the snow, I'm going to use my liner brush and I'm gonna use the back of my brush here like a stamp and I'm just gonna come out and add some snowfall to my card. Be aware that depending on the brush that you choose when you're creating your stamped circles, um, bigger brushes have bigger handles, so the backs of those are going to give you a bigger circle. So I typically always grab my liner brush, which has the skinniest handle, handle, and it's going to give us the smallest circle. And I can typically get about three or four uh, pieces of snow falling down in one um, paint load before I run out. Alright, so one other thing before I let you go, this is finished, um, I wanted to show you another way that you could create snow, um, kind of more of a natural way. So let me grab my round, and I'm going to leave a little bit of water in the tip, so it's kind of wet here, actually, let's see if I can get my white just a little bit loose. So you, what, what you want to do is just add a little bit of water to your white. And make sure that the water you add is clean water. Um, otherwise you might get a different color white. I've got a bucket of uh, clean water. So I have my rinse brush and then white water, or cleaner water for watering down things that I don't want the dirty water to mix up with. So let me see if I can find something dark here so you can really see how that's going to look. One second. Okay. So, any brush really will work for this. I like to use rounds, um, and I water my uh, white down just a little bit. You don't need it, you don't want it dripping off your brush. But then if you take your piece that's, I'm going to try and show you here. And you take your brush and just tap it on your finger. It will give you fun little splatters. Now this method is awesome. It looks great, um, but it does, um, it, you will get paint everywhere <laughs> on the side here. And let me just do a little bit more and then I will lift it up and show you. So you see how that creates just a little bit more random um, dots for the snow. So that's another way that you could add snowfall to your element. So you could just take this, and let's just do it here so we can see the difference. I'm just gonna drop some snow here. And combining both can be a fun thing to do too, because you've got snow that um, is a little bit smaller. And then some that's bigger. So let's, let me peel this away and I will bring it up to you guys so you can see the two together. And then you can determine which you like better.
Remember, if you're using the tape method to create your border, to peel it away very slowly, and it's best to actually let the paint dry uh, before you peel it away um, so that you don't get some tear out with that. So let's hold that up. So you can see the bigger drops with the brush and then those fun little splatters just add a little bit more detail, don't they? So there's that one. And then here's this one with just the big flakes. So what do you like better? What would you use? All right, guys. So, um, if you're just catching this, um, or you're catching the end of it, we are doing five days of Christmas card painting this week, uh, Monday through Friday, every day at noon, I will go live and paint a new Christmas card. So if you missed Mondays, we did the snowman. Where is it? Monday, we did the snowman. Um, and it is available for replay on our Facebook page. So just scroll down and you will find that. Yesterday we did a Christmas tree and that's available for replay. And then today's the truck. And let's do the watercolor type joy or the bells with the watercolor joy tomorrow. And then Friday we'll end it with the cute little Santa gnome. Um, if you want to paint along with us, I'd be happy to share the supply list and tracers. Just message me and I will get those to you. Um, what else? I think that's all I have for you guys today. So I hope you paint um, or I hope you find time to paint. Uh, these are great for sending out to somebody um, for the holidays. These also could be done on little um, canvases with a string hung on the back and you could hang them on the tree. They could be done on little pieces of wood as shelf sitters. So you could use these anywhere really on anything small or you could um, take the tracers and enlarge them and do something a little bit bigger. Uh, whatever you want to paint these on don't feel like you can only paint these on Christmas cards. You're welcome to use these on anything for the holiday season. So thanks for watching guys. I will talk to you later. We will see you tomorrow and we will do um, joy tomorrow. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you later. Bye.